to God. Praise the Lord, uh, ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord. Uh, greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this is David, praise the Lord. I want to give you some time. Uh, we are going to, 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 to pray together today. And we are going to learn the word together. Praise Jesus. And uh, I, I just want to um, wait for some of the friends to come online. Praise the Lord. I wish to, 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 uh, to, 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 to see them coming on. Amen. And we begin a fellowship today. We have had a first session of prayer. Praise the Lord. And God has been so faithful that we want to launch into another level of prayer. Praise the Lord. Uh, but amidst all things, I want you to know that really God loves you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God loves you extremely, and His love cannot be compared to anything else. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we are reaching uh, you from wherever you are. Praise the Lord. And uh, once again, like say David from Uganda. And I want to greet my friends across the globe, uh, and I want to say hi, praise the Lord. Hey, today we want to continue with the book of Ephesians, uh, from where we stopped, praise Jesus. And um, we want to add on something I want to share with you, praise the Lord. I, I've already sent you a comment. Um, uh, uh, this is basically... Uh, uh, this is basically to, 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 to show us what God has already done for us, praise the Lord, and, 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 and what, uh, and what uh, are the things, what is our position in the Lord, praise the Lord. So, if, so we are learning from the book of Ephesians, and today we are privileged to now deal with Ephesians uh, chapter 3, praise the Lord. And you see what uh, Apostle Paul is telling the church is asking praise the lord uh is asking uh, is asking uh the church of ephesus that i, I wish you knew the things praise the lord i wish you understand i wish um you were launched into a place of understanding praise the lord and we see the prayers coming we see the prayer of paul that he made in the first chapter praise the lord coming back in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So as we go through this, I want you to prepare your mind. And I, I want uh, my prayer for you today is, is exactly what is written in the, in the first chapter of a book of Ephesians. Praise the Lord. The post says, and verse uh, 17 it says, that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him hallelujah praise the lord every time we, we read the word or we, we attend church or we listen from a man of god a woman of god and, 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 and we we are not eager to be launched unto this level our lives cannot be changed praise the lord but our lives can be changed if deeper, to go deeper in the lord to go deeper in his knowledge to understand him more and more hallelujah praise be to the lord so paul says that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him praise the lord the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling praise the lord that you may know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints Praise be to God. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. That's my prayer today. As we launch our, as, as we launch our prayer, as we launch our Bible reading hours, we learn from one another. Praise the Lord. My prayer is that, hey, 
you will be launched deeper. You receive that revelation. I just want us to spend some few minutes and ask God and ask God that He may He may establish something deep inside of us. Come on, somebody from wherever you are. We are praying. I, I said we are learning the book of Ephesians, and uh, our prayer throughout this book of Ephesians is in, in in the in the book of in the chapter one, verse seventeen downwards. They say that God. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Begin to speak to God. Father, we thank you, King of glory. The more a man knows you, the more a man draws nigh unto your God, the more is translated into you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This afternoon, Father, let the word of God metamorphose us in the name of Jesus. Let it change us, uh, change us. Let it transfigure us. Let it fine tune us unto the glory of God. Lebo zika tara mante lebo zilele baba. Remante lebo sukata ya mandele baba. Remo shitele bakara mandele baba. Come on, somebody begin to pray. Libo zilele ba. Rende lebo sikete lelelele. Ronde lebo bo silele kataya mandele ba ba ba. Mante lebo sitelelelele. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. Father, we need to receive the revelation. Father, release your spirit. Release the spirit of wisdom and revelation in your word. Release the spirit of wisdom and revelation in your word. That we may know what God, what God has done for us. And what he has done, what, what he has accomplished for us. That we may understand him, O oh God. That we may partake of our position in him. In the name of Jesus. Reketele mandele baba ba, remantele bo shilele kaya mandele ne, rikata ya mandele baba, silele katara mandele ne, rendele ba silele kataya mandele baba, o shilele kataya mandele baba ba, oh yes Lord, oh yes Lord, oh yes Lord, oh yes Lord, kosha taraba kataya ma, rimantele baba, sulele kataya baba, o shitelele kandele bo zilele baba ba, come on somebody pray, come on somebody. Pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. We need to go deeper. We need to go deeper in the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the prayer Paul is making. That hey, these people may receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. We are not just here to do lip service. We are not just here to waste time. We are not on a religious event. Hey, we are on something supernatural. Much more than a tendency. Much more than just reading the word. But, but, but you need to be tapped into the mysteries of God. You need to be tapped into the mysteries of God. And that's, those are the great mysteries that Paul reveals in the book of Ephesians. We need to understand God more. And the opportunity has been given unto us. These mysteries, they have been displayed before us. Hey, shatarabha kataya baba, rimantelebo zilelebha baba kataya, mantelelebo zilelebha kaya, rendelebo zilele kataya mandelelele, rindelebo zile kataya mantelelebha baba, reketele mandelebo ziketelelelele, rimantelebo ziketele mandelebha baba, mantelebo shitelele koseketelelele, Rikataya mandele baba ba, mandele bo ziketele baba ba, ri mantele bo silele kataya baba, mantele bo silele kaya mandele ne, ri ndele bo silele kataya mandele baba, mantele bo shitelele ne, ri kataya mandele baba baba baba. Yes my God, yes my God, silele ko silele baba baba baba, mantele baba 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 baba, ri ketele baba baba baba, silele ne ne ne, ri kataya Mandele baba baba, mantele bo silele baba baba, koshilele kataya mandele baba baba, rama mama 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 kozilele baba baba, 
Rendele baba 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 shilele lele lele rendele bo silele kata ya mandele baba baba mantele bo bo silele kata ya ba rikata ya mandele baba baba oh yes lord oh yes lord oh yes lord come on somebody come on somebody. I want to inspire you I want to read for a scripture you see we are in a generation that that is perverse praise the lord I mean I mean there's so many things that are happening in the world but but there is this encouragement I always get from the book of Daniel praise the lord the bible says in the book of Daniel and uh, and chapter 32 the bible says it has as part a and part b let's read the all of us and then we pick what we want verse 32 says those who do wickedly against the covenant it shall corrupt with uh flattery praise the lord that's why people are corrupted they they they, they just they just take things for granted that's why somebody may 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 may, may not consider things of the spirit so relevant they don't understand they they are spirits have not been enlightened but rather have been darkened praise the lord but the bible says but the people who know they are god shall be strong praise the lord in such a time like this you need God more than anybody else. Praise the Lord. I said, and he cut out great exploits. Praise the Lord. I mean, the things we are supposed to do in the world, we are not supposed to struggle. Praise the Lord. We are not supposed to struggle. Why? Because as long as we know God, and God is for us, God will always simplify them for us. However difficult they may look to the world. Praise the Lord. That's why in this book of Ephesians, uh, the prayer for boys that people should be enlightened. People should be taken deeper in the Lord. Praise the Lord. They should understand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. I want to thank you for everybody that is watching us. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you, God, for men and women across the globe that are, that are watching in. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as 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 we learn as i as as i speak your word father they will receive an imprint in their spirit in the name of jesus that god you will prescribe your words on their hearts that they will be chained in the name of jesus that they will be transformed oh god Father, according to your will, according to your word, according to your purpose, oh God, that none shall listen to these words that will remain the same, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the leading of the Spirit. I completely disappear, that you appear and take control over this place. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God, praise the Lord. Right to Ephesians chapter 3, praise the Lord. And I want to release these mysteries. Now, listen to me carefully. Uh, this book of Ephesians, it was written to believers. Hey, praise the Lord. Yes, it covers, it has the components that are telling the non-believers what the Lord has already accomplished. Praise the Lord. But this book I'm talking about uh, was written to the church of Ephesus. Praise the Lord. Uh, as Paul says to the church of Ephesus, to the saints who are in Ephesus, praise the Lord, and faithful in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. That is according to, uh, according to Ephesians, uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 1, praise the Lord, and the verse 1 say, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in the Ephesus and faithful in Jesus Christ. So what I want to share with you, I am reading it, I am sharing it with one, that, that this was the saints in Uganda, the saints in America. Now I'm talking to the saints watching me. Praise the Lord. And, and the Bible says, faithful in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm talking to the faithful men of God and women of God. We need to go deep into the scripture and see what is this that Paul is telling the church praise the Lord verse 1 of chapter 3 say for this reason I Paul and I, I have the powers to say I David praise the Lord for this reason I Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus oh glory to God he said the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles 
Hallelujah. When Paul talks about the Gentiles, he's talking about you and me. Praise the Lord. In other words, he's talking about the people who were not in the original covenant between uh, men and God. Praise the Lord. And you know the people who were a part of this original covenant, the first covenant, praise the Lord, was between the Israel, the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel, praise the Lord, and God. So when he talks about the Gentiles, in my language we call them Banama Wanga, praise the Lord. In other words, those who were initially not qualified. So Paul is writing to you and me, hallelujah, he says in verse 2, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It says, how that by revelation he made known to me the mysteries. He said, how by the revelation he made known to me the mysteries as I have already written to you. You see, we have gone through chapter 1 and chapter to praise the Lord. And I, I probably I need to share with you that from in the book of Ephesians, from chapter 1 to chapter 3, Paul is, there are things that Paul is bringing out to the church. He's revealing, praise the Lord. He talks about the predestination, praise the Lord. He talks about that God chose us uh, to be holy before the foundation of this world, holy and acceptable in the beloved Praise the Lord. The scripture talks about when you read, as you read those chapters, you see that we have been made alive. We, we who were dead in our trespasses have been made alive in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. It, it also talks about us being, uh, being brought near to God. We were far off. We were aliens. Praise the Lord. We, 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 we were darkened. We were taken away by our wicked actions and our wicked ways. But Paul tells us that we have been brought nigh. Praise the Lord. We have been brought nigh. Amen. He said, no longer foreigners and strangers. Amen. So when you read those chapters, you, you realize, hey, we are no longer foreigners eh, and strangers. We, we, we see the scriptures. So when you read them, you see we now belong to the household of God. We are being built up into a dwelling place for God. Hallelujah. Christ being the cornerstone. Amen. We have been sealed the Holy Spirit. We have been raised with the Christ and seated far above in the heavenly places. When you read chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, you see what Paul is trying to. He's trying to tell, hey, this is what God has done for you. This is your portion. This is now how you relate with him. Hey, those who thought they were strangers, the foreigners, they have now been brought nigh. They have been brought closer to God. They are no longer aliens. Hey, they are no longer strangers. They are no longer foreigners. But we belong to the household of God. Praise the Lord. So, he continues to reveal these mysteries, but also explaining that, hey, these mysteries have passed through me. Like now, I'm, 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 I'm trying to break them down for you. The mysteries that Paul had received, that even the Gentiles can partake this inheritance, can be part of the inheritance, can be part of the promises of God, can be part of this blessing, praise the Lord. So in verse 4 says, By which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So my prayer is, you see, he was telling the church in Ephesus that by which, he says, by which when you read, by which, he said, by which when you read, sorry, by which when you read, glory to God, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of God. And that's my prayer for us today. That when we read, we may understand Oh yes, we may understand that knowledge, that mysterious knowledge of Christ. Hallelujah. Until when you tap into a deeper understanding of Christ, you will never progress in the spirit. Until when you tap into this understanding, praise the Lord. As today, I'm going to be revealing to you deep things of the Lord. Amen. The mysteries, they have been available for you. So he said, by which when you read, you may understand. So child of God, as you watch me, that you may understand. 
It talks about it said, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. My prayer today is that the thing may be revealed to you by the Spirit of God, that you may be changed. When, when you receive a revelation of God, when you receive this understanding, there are many things you are going to stop praying for. Hey, I mean, you're going to walk into a season of thanksgiving. I'm not stopping you from prayer. But your prayer is going to change. Why? Because if you are praying as if you are outside the house, you're going to begin praying as you are inside the house. Hallelujah. Praise be to the living God. The Bible says, in verse 6 it says, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. That you and me we should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his inheritance in Christ through the gospel. Praise the Lord. It is this gospel that brings us it brings us the good news, praise the Lord, that, that opens, that makes us understand the mystery. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 6, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Child of God, you need to fall in love with this gospel, because inside this gospel, the revelation of God is hidden. The power of God is even therein. That when you tap into it, that power is going to manifest inside of you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, I, I'm talking about the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Hallelujah. I think I could open for you. If, if, if you ch we check together, just put your finger there. But we can check another scripture. In the book of Galatians, uh, chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 3. Glory to God. In Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says, I think verse 28. Hallelujah. You can turn with me to that verse. The, the Bible talks about the hairs. Amen. The Bible says, mm -hmm, 28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. Nor for you are all one in Christ. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed, and the heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Heirs according to the promise. That's what, and, and this is the same man, Paul, bringing out the mysteries of what God has done for you as your position in the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's just Go to verse 7 and say, Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of, of, of his power. Paul says, hey, this gospel that the Gentiles can be joint heirs. Hmm, this one. He became a minister of it. He became a conduit of that good news to us. That's why me and you, we are alive. Praise the Lord. So he says, he did it not by might, not by power. No, it was according to the gift of the grace of God given to him by the effective working of the power of God to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let, let, let's, let's go through. We are going through very fast. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, to me, this is Paul saying, he said, to me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was this grace was given that I should preach among Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Which kind of gospel are we preaching outside there? Praise the Lord. I mean, until you understand, until you tap into a deeper revelation of what Christ has done, you don't have the gospel to preach outside there. Praise the Lord. And so whatever Christ accomplished at the cross, Whatever Christ has done for us, that constitutes the gospel we preach there. That, hey, he has come to save the world. He doesn't want the world to perish. 
So Paul is saying that he was given he should, that, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. My prayer this evening that you receive a revelation that God will take you in in deep, in depth of this knowledge. That even when you begin to speak his word, you will speak the mysteries. You open people's understanding. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Number nine says, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Praise the Lord. Other versions say that, that to make people see God's plan for, for the human race. And to make us see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. It had been hidden but now has been revealed. Praise the Lord. It says, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. The word manifold means many sided. You see, it is very dangerous for us as a church to be ignorant. That's why he says that, hey, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly place. You see, you see when, when as a church, we are supposed to reveal the wisdom of God to all principalities, all strongholds, all rulers. They need to know. What do they need to know? They need to know that this Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 says, to which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, hallelujah, the dead, and he seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. That's what we're supposed to the, the church must take on the supreme position. When a man feels the Holy Spirit, speaks a word, it must be respected. It must be honored. It should not be honored because the man is huge, because the man is tall. No, because that word carries power. Hallelujah. When you speak from revelation, your words carry power. Hey, glory to God. That's why Paul tells the people in the Thessalonians, praise the Lord, in, 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 in the, 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 the region of the Thessalonia, the, the Thessalonian church, praise the Lord, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and, and verse 5 he says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. When you have a revelation of God, you are a true man of God. When you don't have the word of God, the revelation, when you have the revelation by the spirit, you are a true servant of God. And if you don't have it, hey, it's time for you to soak yourself in the word of God. Why? Because when you go outside there, you are not supposed to say words. No. You are supposed to preach in power. Hallelujah. In the Holy Spirit. In demonstration. And your word must bring back the results. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, I can read, the Bible talks about the power. How God watches the word. So it is not upon now that, that, that it is not all about the word of God, uh, how is spoken. It is all about the vessel that is carrying the word of God. Praise the Lord. When the vessel is ready to carry the word of God in deep revelation, glory to God, such a word is honored. Praise the Lord. Because such a word that comes from the very throne of God is honored. There are many people who speak the word of God. Praise the Lord. But the results differ. Because some people speak because they have seen others speaking. Some people speak because they read it somewhere. In fact, I've also seen politicians reading scriptures. Hallelujah. Yes, scriptures are good to be read by everybody. But there is a difference 
between a man who reads because he wants to read and a man who reads because when he reads, the spirit of revelation and wisdom is upon that man. Glory to God. In the book of Isaiah, let me just read for you. That's how powerful. The word of God is I respected, honored by God. And God can never allow it to go back without doing Isaiah 55, verse 11. So he said, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Praise the Lord. When you speak on behalf of God, the words you speak bring results. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Your prayer should be, God, I want to speak on your behalf. That's why you need to understand why Paul is laboring to say, Hey, I am praying that you may receive this deep understanding. You may know. And you see, it is not mysterious. Why? Because now it has been revealed. It is no longer a mystery. Because it is now at the display. Everybody can tap in. Praise Jesus. In the book of, in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. I want to read for your scripture. In the book of 2 Corinthians. If you have your Bible, you can open with me. 2 Corinthians, praise the Lord. To read together. 2 Corinthians, praise Jesus. Chapter 3, it talks about, he said, and we have, verse 4, and we have such trust, trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. That's why Paul is pleading with people. I want you to understand. I want you to tap into the source. You see, the word Abba means source. When you tap into Abba Father, you begin to release things from the source of God. You begin to release things from the very throne of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, that in verse 6, it says, Who also, it talks about, Who also made us sufficient ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. That's why we ought to go deep. And when I say go deep, I mean we ought to acknowledge the Holy Spirit to reveal to us as you're reading. So Paul is making a prayer. There are things I want you to know. And hey, which things is he laboring? He's saying we need to understand. Let's just go on. Let's just go on. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. We are in Ephesians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 3. As we, we are now in verse 10, he says, To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the church, by the church, to the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places. 11. According to the eternal purpose which he made accomplished, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Accomplished. The scripture doesn't say it is about to be complete. The scripture says he accomplished it in Christ Jesus. That's why many people are not at rest. So as I'm speaking to you, I want you to tell you the things I'm yet to tell you. These are some of the things that are going to help you to enter into your rest. Praise the Lord. Because whatever Paul is talking about, when you read, I want you to read. When you read from chapter 1, you see the things that Paul is talking about, they are in past tense for you who are better in English. Glory to God. It says, let's go, let's go. In, 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 in verse 12, it says, In whom we have boldness and access with the confidence through faith in him. In what? In these mysteries. In this understanding of God. In this knowledge. So it depends. How do you understand God? Do you see God as a one who is about to forgive you? Or as the one who has forgiven you? Do you see God as someone who is about to bring you closer to him or as the one who has already brought you closer? Do you see God as the one who is about to change your destiny or as the one who has already predestined you? Glory to God. In verse 1 it says that, 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 that blessed the Father 
Oh my God. Verse 4. It says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. How do you see yourself? So Paul is making a prayer that you may understand what God has done for you. So when you understand and receive that understanding, that's why he says that in whom, when you understand the Lord, he says in whom we have boldness and access with the confidence through faith in him. For example, the Bible says, I am no longer a stranger. The scripture says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19 he says now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but you fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God so in this understanding I have the confidence praise the Lord and I have the access hallelujah he said in whom we have boldness and access with the confidence through faith in him in this understanding of the Lord, I have access. That's why the scripture says, my people perish because of ignorance. Some people think, yes, they are very far away from God. But if you raise your faith today, you will sleep in the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Speak to yourself and say, I belong to the household of God. Speak to yourself and say, that in whom I have boldness, I have access with the confidence. I have access with confidence through faith in him. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. Glory be to the most high God. Now listen, the scripture says in verse 13, says, Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulation for you. Which is your glory? Paul was encouraging them that yes, for me to tap into these mysteries, I've suffered, I've gone through issues, but do not lose heart. This is for your own glory. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. This is for your own glory. When you get to know what God has done for you, when you tap into this, this, this finished work at the cross, hey, your life will not remain the same again. Maybe some of you are laboring too much to please God. You do not receive righteousness by laboring too much to be right. You receive righteousness by believing and receiving the gift of righteousness. It is not man who makes himself right with God. It is God that has made man right with him. Through his son Jesus Christ. By the blood that was shed at Calvary. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why in verse 14 of this chapter, Paul says, listen to what Paul says. Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's now making another prayer for us. I am making the same prayer for you. That what? He said, this Father of our Lord Jesus, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. As long as you have received Jesus Christ as your personal and savior, hey, you are a member of this family and you are named. In other words, your name is in this clan of God. Hallelujah. Tell your friend, tell your colleague that I belong to the clan of God. I am of the clan of God. Hallelujah. You can trace your lineage. You belong to God because of the blood of Jesus. So Paul says, this is the prayer he's making for the church in Ephesus. The prayer I'm asking guys, hey, can we tap into this? Can we tap into the reality? Can we tap into the results of this prayer? He said, hey, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, 
Oh my God. Praise the Lord. That he may grant me according to the riches of his glory. What? It says, it says, it says, to be strengthened with the mighty through his spirit in the inner man. It is this understanding of God that I'm telling you that you will build up your inner man. Praise the Lord. That will build up your inner man. That's why in Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 2, praise the Lord. When, when you just go back one, one chapter, chapter 2 verse 20 says, it says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles under the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. He said, he said, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Praise the Lord. He says, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you, all, you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. In the spirit. That's why, Back to our scripture, it says, it says that in verse 16 of chapter 3, it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened in with might through his spirit in the inner man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That you may be strengthened, you may be built. What does the spirit do? The spirit brings this revelation of God. And then you get built in the truth. Hallelujah. That's why as you go down, wait, 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 wait. by the time you finish chapter 3 of Ephesians, then Paul takes us into a character, which character later on, it takes us into the, mis the ministries that have been given to us. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Most High God. So, so the scripture says, it says that, you, that his spirit in the Hinama, 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's my prayer tonight. It is my prayer that, that, it said, it said, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Praise Jesus. When, when you see the scripture in the book of Colossians chapter 1 and uh, I think verse 23, praise the Lord. Uh, Colossians, we can tap there. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23, the Bible says, If indeed you continue in a faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you had, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Praise the Lord. You see what he's telling? You see what Paul is telling us? If you do not move away. He's talking about faith. Faith. Hallelujah. When you get to know what God has done for you, then your faith is built up. Praise the Lord. Your faith is built up. Your faith is built up. That's why Colossians chapter 2. Verse 6 says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Hallelujah! Praise be to God! When you get these mysteries, when you get this understanding of God, what God has done for you at the cross, Praise Jesus. Then you receive your freedom. You begin to walk in power. You begin to walk in the truthfulness of the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. Back to Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says, That Christ may dwell. That Christ may dwell. In your heart through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. Praise the Lord. 
Let's go this. He says, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, uh -huh. the length, the depth, and the height. I want to spend some time here. Praise the Lord. Some few minutes. You see, many people read these things and they want to be mathematical. Praise the Lord. When, when the Bible says that you may understand the width, uh -huh, that you may comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, what do we understand? Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want, I want to, to share with you something. You see, when we talk about, let me begin with the length. When we talk about the length, when Paul says here that you, that you may comprehend the length, because I told you, the thing is to make you free, is to usher you into your rest. When you know what Christ has done for you, then you rest, you operate from the resting point, knowing that this has been done by Christ. Praise Jesus. You can't do much without him. And he has done it for you. So, when I talk about the length, or when you see Paul talks about it, the length is basically the crucifixion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The crucifixion. We are talking how you see, the crucifixion as the stripes that he got. You see, the nailing on the cross. The death. So, the length, when you comprehend the length, when you comprehend the crucifixion and understand why was he crucified? Why did he go through what he went through? Why did he go unto the cross? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You see, in the book of, uh, let me just say, Romans chapter 6, Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6 and uh, verse, let's read verse 8. Verse, we can begin from 6 to 8. The Bible says, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with the Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. The length, the crucifixion. He did not only die alone, but we who believe, we also died with him. And because he's alive, we are alive too. We are living. We have the life. We don't have the life before his victory. We have the life after his victory after conquering the power of death. So we don't walk unto victory. We walk in victory. In other words, before we win, we, 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 we approach things from the victory point of view. Hallelujah. The length, the crucifixion. Jesus died for our sins, but also us who believe in him, we also die. That is all about the length. The crucifixion, and he died for the whole world. How far? That's why the Bible says, "As far as the east from the west." So he has taken away our sins. East, the west, the land, the crucifixion. So when Paul says that you need to comprehend with the saints what is the width and the length and the depth. Please excuse me. <coughs> the depth. Now let's talk about the depth. Praise Jesus. The depth is the dissension. It descended. How much did he descend? He went down. And when he went down, the, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. I can give you a scripture. Let's look at the book of Mark. Uh, Mark, 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 Mark. Glory to God. Let me just open the scripture. There's a scripture in the book of Mark. Holy Spirit, just remind me where the scripture is. Praise the Lord. The verse. In the book of Mark, 
Glory to God. Let me just open for you. Just be patient with me. In the book of Mark, <coughs> chapter 15, and uh, verse, uh, verse, we could read that, uh, verse 32. The Bible says, let, let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That we may see Eh? He said, descend from heaven, that we may see and believe even those who were crucified with him, revived him. Praise the Lord. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the night. They wanted to get him from the cross, bury him. So the dissension, that is, <laughs> glory to God, that is the depth. He went down. Now, now the dissension was not all about to be buried. No, he went down specifically because he needed to disarm the enemy to ensure that the keys of death have been confiscated from the devil. In other words, they have been redeemed. The, the devil no longer has those keys. Hey. So when he went there, we were also buried, we descended together with him. Oh, Rabaka Sakata. Shelele Baba Baba. Rege Sulabaka. That's why when Jesus won that battle down there, <laughs> praise the Lord, we were also winning too, us who believe. That is, that is, that is the depth. Praise the Lord. Now, Paul talks about uh, the widow. But I want to also to relate it with what we call the breadth. The breadth. The width is this. Eh? The, 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 we have the longitudinal, then the, the other side. Praise the Lord. You mathematicians, you can do nothing. But let's talk about, instead of the width, let me just compare it with the, the breadth. What is the breadth all about? The breadth is all about the resurrection. Hallelujah. That's why Romans chapter 6 again. Just close to where I read, 6 and verse 9, uh, glory to God. We see, we see something that happened. Romans chapter 6 and verse 9. What does, it, what, what does he say? Uh, 6 verse 9. Praise the Lord. He says, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. This resurrection is not all about somebody coming out. Where, no. It is... It is, it is life. It is a restoration of life. It is a sign of victory that he has won death. And if you believe, you have also won death. That's why you need to walk. The Bible says labor to enter the rest. When you lab laboring to enter the rest means believing in what Christ accomplished at the cross for you. Because it is only at the cross that you can rest. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So this is a resurrection. And you see, you see, you may think this is something that just happened. Uh, many years ago, before, before Christ manifested in the flesh, in the book of Hosea, if you with me, you can open Hosea. Praise the Lord. I can give you a scripture. The book of prophet Hosea. In my language, we say, Hosea. Praise the Lord. So, if you check the book of uh, Hosea, praise the Lord, and, uh, and uh, you can read still verse chapter 6, praise the Lord. Let me see. In chapter 6 and uh, verse, uh, verse 2, it says, After two days, he will, he will, he will, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. <laughs> wow, my God. This resurrection it was not only for Jesus. The Bible says, after two days, Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2, he said, after two days, he will revive us. The two days, Jesus was in the grave, fighting, getting the, disarming the enemy and so on. The Bible says, after two days, he will revive us. 
He says, on the third day, he will raise us up. That's why, whatever that the devil had killed in your life today in the name of Jesus, I want you to speak resurrection over it in the name of Jesus. I want you to speak restoration over it. Why? I am not living in a dead state. The life I live now is a resurrected life. And I can prove to that. Let me finish this scripture. Let me read verse, verse 2. Says, he said, I said on the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Tell your neighbor, I am not dying now. I am alive. Verse 3 says, let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. Praise Jesus. I am very confident that this resurrection speaks volumes in my life. In the book of Galatians, chapter 2, oh yes, verse 20, the Bible says, for I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. Glory to God. Hey, hey. He says, And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. That is the resurrection. That is the bread of Oh, you can, in the other language, you can call it the wedding. Praise Jesus. Because the predict has to measure the guy. But the wedding is just, huh? praise the Lord. I am trying to demonstrate like my president does, but you have understood. Praise Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, then the height. The height is the ascension. Where is he? Ascension means to go up. When you understand now, your thinking is going to change. Let's read. It says that you may comprehend. It says it says that you may comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height. What is this height? Can I show you this height? How far? When he resurrected, where is he? How far is he? And what happened? Ephesians chapter one, verse fifteen. We read from fifteen. This is the prayer as we understand this. He said, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory of inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Oh yes. According to the working of his mighty power. Uh, oh God. Glory to God. He says, with which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. We are talking about the height. He raised him from the dead. Uh -huh. And what happened? And he seated him and he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is not at the cross like some friends of mine they have their crosses with jesus still nailed his leg here no 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 the bible says and he raised him from the dead and he seated him at the at his right hand in the heavenly places 21 far above all principalities and the powers and the might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all that is what the height did for us <laughs> this happened to jesus now listen to me carefully praise the lord 
So don't, when they say comprehend on the heights, he was raised up. He governs from up. The Bible says far above principalities and powers. And the Bible says in 22, it says, and he put all things under his feet. I want you to picture it. I want you to imagine it. Praise the Lord. Now, now, I am revealing to you secrets. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. These things have made me, oh my God, I, I can't even describe. I'm almost, oh yes. I feel excited because of what Christ is. Now listen to me. The Bible talks about Jesus being raised up. He's now seated. He has been seated in the heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. Far above principalities, rulers, dominions, it is. Then he says, and he put all things under his feet. Listen, I'm coming for you. When you go to Ephesians chapter 2 and the verse 6, he says, and he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hey, Praise the Lord. What the, so so the, the assertion, the height, did not only mean for Jesus to be raised up and sit in the heaven place, but even me, even you, we have been seated, the Bible says, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heaven and places in Christ Jesus. So, I have been raised from the earthly standard. I have been sat or seated in the heavenly place. But listen, the Bible says, and seated us, raised us together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In other words, I am found in heaven. But even when you go to heaven, you cannot just find me. I am inside Jesus. Man. The day you understand this, the day you tap into this, you will never fear witch doctors. You will never fear any witch, any sorcerer. Why? Because the Bible says and is far above all principalities, powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also that which is to come. That's what God did to Christ when he raised him up. But the Bible says that and he raised us together. In other words, it means we are also far above. Hey, my God. Child of God. Speak to yourself and say, I am far above principalities. I am far above powers and might and dominion. Which doctors cannot find you? It doesn't take your strength. It takes your faith. When you know and you know that, hey, I have been raised with Christ and have been seated in the heavenly places, they cannot locate you. In other words, because you are seated in the heavenly places with Christ, all things are under you. That's why no witchcraft is formed against you can prosper. Never. Because where you are, by the position of, by, 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 by virtue of who you are in Christ, they cannot do anything to you. I want to encourage you. Maybe some of you, you have been taught since childhood that somebody is bewitching you. Maybe you have been taught you were cursed. Maybe you have been taught different things. I am here to tell you that today in the name of Jesus, you have the power to refuse the operations of those things in your life. And you have the power to tell them that, hey, I changed the location. Glory to God. That's a victory we have. That's why I have been able to explain to you. I have been able to comprehend with you the, le the width, the length, the depth, and the height. This height makes me a victorious man. It makes you a victorious person. Hallelujah. And when you know this, now what? The Bible says, you see, that we, when we talked about the length, we say the crucifixion. We have been crucified with the Christ. 
then why do we struggle? Why do we struggle? I always see people towards the, uh, the, the Easter. There are some people who got the cross and they are crucifying themselves. Hey, Jesus did it for all of us. Praise the Lord. The Bible says he died for all of us. God did not spare his son. So the crucifixion you went through. That's why Galatians chapter 2 verse 1 says, I have been crucified with Christ. Then we talk about the, 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 we talk about the depth, the dissension. We have been buried with him. So why do you struggle? Praise the Lord. We talk about uh, the, the bread, the resurrection. We have resurrected with him. Because if we died with him, so and he's alive, we also live with him. So we live in the resurrected form of life. Hallelujah. The height. He was raised up. Sit in the heavenly places. We have also been raised up. Sit in the heavenly places. This is the, the, that's what Paul was saying. They were mysteries, but now the things are clear. They are before us. For us to walk in them and enjoy life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is, that is verse. When you tap into that, verse 18. Verse 19 says, To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You will never be filled with the fullness of God unless you acknowledge the power. You acknowledge the power of the cross. Praise the Lord. I mean, I mean, I mean, when, when, when I, you, I can tell you more about the cross. But I think next time, praise Jesus. Next time I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the cross. You get to know the power. So whatever you are battling with, rotates around the cross. Your victory, your faith, your what? At the cross. That's why Paul says, hey, let's comprehend on, 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 the, on, the, on the length, on the width, on the depth, on the height. Praise Jesus. Glory be to God. So it says, in 19, I like it, it says that to know the love of Christ. You see, you see, you need to know that you are loved of God. And you see, what makes you to be loved of God was already accomplished. Anybody watching me from wherever you are, if you have never received Jesus Christ, I want you to know that these all things have been explained. Christ did them for you and me. That we may tap into this. We may believe and we enter into a life of rest. And we may enjoy life. And life in abundance. Praise the Lord. That's why verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. The revelation of God in your life determines the power of God that works in your life. If you comprehend God as somebody who can do some things and can't do other things, that's what will operate in your life. But I mean, He has done it for us. So that's why it's important you as a Christian to labor and enter into your rest. And laboring to enter into your rest is basically partaking of that that was accomplished at the cross. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's basically what it is. That's basically. Hallelujah. It says, as we wind up, it says, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all the generations forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today I told you, I wanted to, to tell you what God your position in God and what he has already done for you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very difficult for you to operate from the victory point of view unless you begin to live a life in the Son of God by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching and you have never accepted Jesus Christ to be a personal servant, I want to give you an opportunity that you may invite him into your life today. That you may tap into this 
blessings that have been given to us freely. If you want to invite Jesus today, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, today I have heard your love. I've heard what you did at the cross for me. I believe you in my heart and confess with my mouth that I'm saved. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me all my sins, those that I know and those that I don't know. Delete my name from the book of the dead. Write my name in the book of life. From today onwards, I confess that I am saved and I'm a child of God. Devil and your kingdom have nothing to do with you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've made this prayer with me, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, King of God, and I honor you. Bless your name. You are awesome, you are abundant, and you are King of God, Lord. Your name is highly enthroned, and you are far above everything. I pray for the person who has made this prayer today, that you establish them on the rock of salvation that cannot be shaken. I pray that they grow in faith. I pray that they will understand what God has accomplished them. I pray they will never backslide. And I pray, God, for miracles, signs, and wonders to fall there. Lord, we thank you and we honor you. Father, I bless you for those people. And I pray for miracle in their lives. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you meet them at their points of need. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, say amen. Please, if you have made this prayer, find a, a church where they read the Bible and they pray in the Spirit. And be part of Tell them I gave my life online. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to make a prayer for the believers who are watching me today. From wherever you are. It's very important that we comprehend on the understanding and the knowledge of God. What God has done for us. Praise the Lord. So I want to pray with you. I want us to, to desire to be filled with the Spirit. I want to read for you one scripture because many times when I talk about the power of the Spirit, you see, you see, so there are Christians who live their life, but, 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 but they don't embrace the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says, I always read this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says, But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what a man knows, the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Do you want to tap into the uh, deep understanding of God? The Bible says, even no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that, that have been freely given to us. Amen. The things we also speak, not in words which man is wisdom, teaches, but with the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So my prayer today is that we may humble ourselves. That we may learn from God. Let's concentrate as we read the Bible. Let's study the Bible. Hey, you see, the Bible can be digested in many ways. Number one. By hearing, that's what the scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Like you've been hearing me, watching me, that's okay. Number two, we read, reading the word of God. How often do you read the word of God? 
Let's make it a daily business. Every hour, every minute, you need a scripture. By studying, study the word of God. By context and content, understand what really the scripture means. Get many Bible versions. Compare notes. Get a dictionary. Define words. Understand the event and which the scriptures are applied. Understand the tenses. Hallelujah. I said, hearing. I say, reading. I have also say, studying. Now I want to say, meditating. Meditate on the word of God. You can only meditate on what you have read or studied. Or what you have heard. And the number five, you can actually paraphrase or rephrase or quote the scriptures. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ was able to do that when he was tempted. So I want to pray for you today that God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you release the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That you release that anointing over our lives. That we may be able to comprehend the depth, the height, the length, the width of your love for us. That we may be able to understand what you have done for us and accomplish the cross. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and receive. In the same spirit, God, I pray that you meet every one of, of, of the people that are watching. You meet them at their points of need. I pray for those who are sick. I rebuke that sickness in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that cancer. I rebuke that backache. I rebuke any kind of infirmity, any kind of unfruitfulness, any kind of things that, that, that is puzzling you, maybe at your place of work, maybe in your relationship, maybe in your health, maybe in your investments, whatever that has had been stagnated, I lease it right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak financial open doors in your life. I speak divine health in your life. In the name of Jesus, I speak prosperity. I speak wisdom over you. I speak victory over you. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I declare that the joy of the Lord shall be your portion now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. Once again, I am Dr. David Carvin Vega from Uganda. I love you so much. Be blessed. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed.